Hey guys, it's Miss Eland, and I am here to show you how to access some of those websites that we will be using during our remote learning time. So most of these websites are Google um, accessible, so the students need to know their Google um, login and password to be able to get to them. I am going to be showing you how to get to those using my daughter's login information just so that you can see what it'll look like on your end. So once you get to a new um, browser, you want to go to perryschools.org. Then you will be able to see the main page for the township. There are these resources up here that are quick and easy to get to. But the one that I like going to is the resource portal right here because it gives you a list of all of the things that you can um, go to at this point. For me, I'm going to show you guys how to log into your Google Mail. So when you click on it, you will see a login screen like this, and you're going to put in your username at student.perryschools.org. And then it'll ask you for your sign in, your login information, your password so that you're able to get there. And once you are there, you'll be able to see your email. So as it's loading up, you can see that she actually has quite a few emails. Um, and some of them are really old. Some of them are recent just because they just are allowing um, elementary students to be able to use this um, Google email. From here, I'm going to X out of that one. From here, you'll be able to go back to the resource portal, and I want to show you how Google Drive works. So I'm going to click on the drive again. Because I'm already signed into her account, it automatically brings me to her Google Drive. Now, Google Drive is great because you can see all of the things that she's been working on, and you can see how she's done quite a bit of looks like um, writing reports and just her writing in general. Um, she loves cats, as you can see. And she's been able to make a slideshow. The other really cool thing with Google Drive is I can share things directly with them. And so they would access it through the shared with me. So she was shared from her teacher, um, the robotics slides. So these are all the things that have been shared to her. So Google Drive is great for those students. Another resource that I enjoy using is Google Classroom. So when you click on the little chalkboard, it'll show you the classes that you are enrolled in. So if you look at this, she's got all of her teachers here and some of the things that they've been working on. Um, her teacher, they've been reading um, Harry Potter. And so you can see here, they as, her teacher assigned to her a quiz. Um, she assigned some kind of writing. She, has, she assigned slides for something. So this is a great place for students to get the work that they need to do to complete. The great thing about this is when you click on one of these, it automatically saves it to your Google Drive. Another great resource from this page is Parent Square or Student Square. So it's asking you to log in and you're able to log in through your Google. So I'm not going to worry about the information here. I'm just going to hit sign in with Google. And because I already have my Google information in there, I'm able to log in without having to put anything in. So this is again from her school, some things that have been posted recently in her school. Students will be able to get messages um, from their, their teachers and from anybody at our school, and they also will be able to send messages to me. That is the main source, those main resources. Some other things that the students will be able to use um, are on this right side of the screen. One of the greatest tools is this IXL right here. Again, when you click on it from there, it automatically puts in this information down here. All they have to do is to put in their username and password. Let's 
So you can see up here they have math skills and they have language arts skills. Um, you can pick grade level, you can pick um, the different skills that they want to work on. So the teachers might assign them a specific skill and it's usually named by the letter and then the number. So it would be K.1 if this is the one that I wanted you guys to look at. Another resource that we will be using is McGraw-Hill. And again, it uses your Google login. So it gives you a bunch of different apps that we have. We're going to click on McGraw-Hill down at the bottom. And McGraw-Hill um, is where students can go to for their reading and their math series. So if I'm asking the students to do some everyday math games, they're going to click on the math page and then click um, whatever it is their classroom and then down here at the bottom are some online games. So they have this option of all of these different online games that they're able to use. Sit out of those. Another resource that they can go to is Pear Deck. So Pear Deck's down here on the side, closer to the bottom. So they go Pear Deck here. And what they will do is join a session and the teacher will have a code that they will give the students and the students would type in their code and then they would have the option of signing in with their Google account again. Another resource that we use is ReadWorks. I'm going to actually, um, this one has to be typed in. It's not on this website. So I'm going to go up to the top and type in readworks.org. There we go. And once they get here, you can go to student login and we are going to log in. They already have my class code, so they're going to log in with their Google account. And we're going to pick their name and just hit them. Say, yep, we want to allow it. And for her, she her teacher is not using this, so she doesn't have a code. My kids already have their code, so they wouldn't need to use this. But what they would see is their list of classes, and they would go in and see the assignments that I have for them. Another great website is BrainPop. So from the resource portal, it's again listed over here. at the top of this section. And for Brain Pop, they go through Clever. Maybe log in to go that one first. Okay. Once I'm in Clever, I can click on Brain Pop Junior and it automatically logs them in. They have the option of looking at all of these videos. Um, if I were to click on just Readings. the random one, fact and opinions, they have a short video that they can watch about it. And then they have all of these different activities that um, they can also look at and do. So Brain Pop is a great resource. From here at our Clevers page, we have Mayan. The students love to listen to Mayan, and they can pick books. Um, based on their Lexile, based on their interest. So you can see um, there's lots of different books. These are just some of the ones that are kind of here for her. Um, another website that I like to use is Spelling City. So I'm going to go spellingcity.com. And I will log in. And again, no need to put it down at the bottom. We're just going to click on sign in with Google. Click on the student's name. And she's a student. So she wasn't able to get in because she's not in a class. 
something that I use, but it would have brought up their main page. Some other great resources that I like to use are Kahoot. So you would go Kahoot.it. And the kids would get a game pin from their um, teacher and then they would enter and then the next screen would be for them just to type in their name and wait for the teacher to stop, start the game. Another um, resource that I like to use is getepic.com. So with this one, we can do login, login as a student. Um, the students can get the code from their teacher so that they are able to go to um, their personal page. So that's how you get to Epic. It's the website that reads books to them as well. Um, Zoom is that video recording where we're able to chat with the teacher and the other people in the class. So again, I would go to sign in. Down here, I'm gonna sign in with Google. And a couple things that we can do, we can join a meeting using the code, host a meeting, schedule a meeting. Most of the time you're gonna to wanna to join a meeting with the code. I like signing into this because then um, everyone can see your name and it's not just um, a random like computer name. From Zoom, you can also go to YouTube. And I am looking for my page. So I'm just going to type in my name and look for where I can see me. And I'm down here at the bottom. Mine is right here. So I'm going to click on it. Hey guys, it's Miss Eland. I am here just trying and I'm to. I actually just want to get to my channel. So I'm actually going to subscribe to this just so that it's easier to get to. Those are all the websites that I have for right now. I hope they were helpful for you.